welcome to this sponsoring session by Cosmo Consult about the Cosmo DevOps and Docker self-service and about Cosmo Docs. Thanks a lot for joining. My name is Tobias Fenster. I'm the CTO of the Cosmo Consult Group and also a, a Microsoft MVP for business applications uh, with a focus on Business Central and for Azure. And I will show you the offerings that we have and, and that I want to show you today. So the starting point for this is uh, one question. Um, if you're looking at those topics that you see popping up here, do you feel like you are already in control of all of this? Do you know how to handle this? Are you already set up? And uh, even more importantly, maybe are you happy with the amount of time all of this costs setting it up and especially maintaining it, um, changing it through the changes that Microsoft is delivering and so on? Um, and if you are happy with all of that, then this will be a very boring session. You might uh, want to take a nap in, in that case. But if you're not happy with where you are there, um, either because you, you don't have it fully set up yet or you um, are not happy with the time it takes you to, to keep it up and running, then I hope this will be an interesting and exciting uh, session for you where you can see how you can improve in that area. So I want to show you two offerings. It will mainly be about our DevOps and Docker self-service. And also I have um, a bit about our offering called Cosmo Docs. So uh, first of all, I want to introduce to you the team <clears throat> that has created all the amazing things that I will show you in the next couple of minutes. Um, we have Michael Megel, who is working on the Azure DevOps parts and um, on, uh, power, on the Power Apps front end. We have Markus Lipper, the recent addition to our team, who is working on container orchestration, Azure DevOps automation, and uh, VS Code extension development. We have Walter Heger, who in this context has been working on uh, Cosmo Docs a lot. And then I am the one who does uh, everything that no one else wants to do. Um, we have spent around 15 mon a month in that team. And I can tell you that this is really a very motivated and, and very good team. I rarely work with uh, such motivated colleagues. So um, the goal for us was to make it as easy as possible. And we spent really quite some effort and quite some time of, of making this happen. But the basic idea now is that you just let the service know what you want, same as with a vending machine, and then you just pick it up because it's automatically delivered to you. And to give you a rough idea of what we what we can do on the Azure DevOps side, um, we can create organizations and projects with the basic setup, and uh, then we can customize it from power from a Power App and from VS Code. We have a fully automated setup um, for the pipelines uh, based on AL Ops, including automated tests for the repositories, for branching policies, for security settings, for the overall settings. And um, that is also available from a Power App and from VS Code. And we have a better integration into VS Code of um, the Azure DevOps stuff. So this really is, again, about making it as easy as possible for everyone to use and to consume and to get started. But also it is about standardizing to make sure that you, uh, when you switch between projects in your company, um, that you don't have something that is slightly different than last time and you spend quite a lot of time to understand of, now how is this different but really it is exactly the same you can immediately switch you can immediately get started you don't have a large time to get up and running if you're starting on a project whether it's a new project or it's an existing project that you join everything is is cared for and um, is easy to use and, and set up the second area where we're working on is docker um, we have a service that allows you to create development containers, again, either from the Power App or from Visual Studio Code. As a developer, probably you're working in uh, Visual Studio Code. But then we also have the scenario that you want to have a container for a, um, a test or demo environment, or you want to approve a pull request, and that is possible from the Power App as well, because in that scenario, you um, likely are a functional consultant who maybe is not that familiar or uh, doesn't always have Visual Studio Code open. So we wanted to make it again as easy as possible. So we just created an easy to use Power App. For those containers, you can configure basically everything, um, the basic settings, but also things like uh, adding in a backup file, apps that you want to have deployed, DLLs if you're working on-prem, um, FOPs if you're, you're still in the old world uh, to a degree, fonts that you might need, rapid start packages to, to bring in data for demo environments or automated tests, um, different licenses, being it your development license or a customer license, different versions and so on. And all of this um, you just set up in an easy to use configuration file that I will show you in a minute. And the rest again, just works automatically. 
And then we use the same infrastructure for the um, continuous integration, continuous deployment builds. Uh, we create the build agents themselves. So there is no need to maintain and set up build agents. That is automatically happening on our environment as well. And of course, we are creating the NAV or business central containers that are doing the actual builds in uh, the Azure pipelines. For Cosmo Docs, uh, what we offer is an easy to use and understand uh, authoring process. You just need to have a GitHub repository and then you use Markdown to define your uh, Docs content. That Git repository, of course, can be an Azure DevOps repository, but it also can be something completely different. We have a fully automated production process that creates the web output and also PDF output. So if you have a customer that says it's all fine that you have context sensitive uh, web based help that we are offering, but we also want to have a PDF to store it somewhere or whatever, we also offer that. We have an integration into the Azure Cognitive Search uh, to get an ideal search experience. And that's also um, even more important when you're looking at uh, finance and supply chain management, uh, what used to be AX. So uh, th that is also uh, something that's very important there. Um, and we have a seamless integration in Business Central as well as in the other uh, Dynamic 365 products that I just mentioned. All of this is managed as a fully managed SaaS offering. So again, the idea is just use it, be able to get up and running as quickly as possible. No need for infrastructure maintenance on that side. So all of this is managed and de delivered by our cloud and IT service um, entity who are specialized in delivering uh, production grade environments for that purpose. Um, we have it monitored in Azure Application Insights to make sure that we very quickly understand if something is happening, um, if, if something breaks, if a license um, expires, or if uh, for whatever reason a, a recent release of the containers don't work anymore, then uh, we very quickly get an understanding and alerting on that and are able to fix it. It's supported by our global end-to-end -end support organization, so um, you get high quality support on everything as well and it's maintained and optimized by the same group that I already introduced to you. So the people that have created it are now working on um, making it even better, adding additional features, adjusting it to customer and, and partner requirements to make sure that we have um, exactly what you need. Um, and then basically the, the whole story is you should be able to just use it. I don't want to spend too much time on understanding it, learning it, setting it up. All that should be delivered to you. As I said, it's a fully managed SaaS offering. So it's it's really something that you buy, you get started. We need to have some um, setup to make sure the systems are connected, but that is something that we take care of as well. And then you can just use it. At I can talk a lot about that. Uh, what's interesting is to see how it actually works. So I have brought uh, today a couple of demos. And the first demo that I want to show you is using the project management Azure, Dev uh, Azure DevOps project management power app. As you can see here, there are a couple of things that you can do. For example, create an organization. I assume for the demo that we already have a DevOps organization because there's not too much that is happening there. But then we can also create a project and that is what I want to show you. So I just click here, I get a list of my organizations and I select the demo DevOps organization. I give the project a name. Uh, we are in the BC Tech Talk, so uh, I give that the BC Tech Talk demo name. I give it a description. This is my fantastic project and I create it. I'm cheating a bit here. This actually takes around 60 or uh, 75 seconds, something like that. But uh, for the sake of this demo, I just uh, fast forward it and now my project is created. The base setup is done. Um, work items are set up like they need to be. Security settings are set up like they need to be. Everything is um, as I want to have it and it's standardized and always the same. Now we want to get started with development. So we create an app. Again, I select my organization. I can see that the project is not yet there because we've just created it. So I just quickly reload, look at um, my organization again. Now we have the BC Tech Talk demo project. I give my app a name. It's the BC Tech Talk app. Um, I can uh, again provide a uh, uh, description for it. And then I can select the country version that I want to use. Um, I'm coming from Germany, so I select DE. And then I can select the different releases. For now, I'll uh, use the sandbox. And I can again create app and I get the success message. Again, I'm cheating here a bit. It actually takes around 60 seconds. Um, but for the sake of the demo, I, I sped this up a bit. Um, so uh, to give you an idea what we already have here, 
I will now switch over to Visual Studio Code. So this is the um, Visual Studio Code extension that we've built to have a better integration, to make it easier for developers to interact with Azure DevOps. And as you will see, it's mostly around convenience and ease of access. So we have our organizations here again. I'll select the Demo DevOps organization, BC Tech Talk Demo, and then we look at the repositories. And there we can see that we have the BC Tech Talk app already um, created. I don't have a container yet, so let's create a container. I just give it a name nothing else to set up. I already told it what country version and um, BC version I want to use. And you can see here, it tells me that um, creating the container has started. Typically, it takes around 10 seconds. But if someone else um, has never used that image before, that needs to be created. We also already have a pipeline in place. So I just opened the pipeline. And you can see here that by just by creating the app, the pipeline has automatically been set up. And because the backend also is in place already, it could immediately start. It has started the container, it has started the build and test, and it's now creating the release. Um, what I also want to show you is how um, easy it is to uh, clone a repository. So if I want to get started with development, either um, as someone who's getting started in a new project, or if this is a brand new project uh, at all, as it is in our case, it uh, just asks me for a directory, then it clones it, I open it, it recognizes that there is a workspace file in here, I select open workspace, and now I have everything preset up for me. I have the app, I have the test area, I have my sources, and I can get started. Of course, what I still need to get really started is the connection to my container, because we have created it, but it's not yet connected to my workspace. So I go back in here, I open the repositories, um, of my project, I select the right repository and the container. And you can see here, this is my new container. And I can directly create a launch JSON for it and do a lot of different things like file share, access the PowerShell and so on. So now I've clicked on uh, create the launch JSON. Now let's take a look in the launch JSON. It has now created the right file for me. Um, so it's connected to my new container that we've just created um, to our server on Azure in the back end. I can see the server instance and all of that, but I actually don't need to worry because that is already um, set up for me and it just works. If I now make a change, for example, I'm adding something um, uh, very meaningful here. To give you an idea about the convenience functions that I, I mentioned, um, now I want to connect this to a work item because I did this to solve a particular work item. So in that case, I open a different project because I don't have work items in our new project. Um, but over here, I have a couple of work items. I can select a list, do a right click and say associate work item. And this is now added it um, into the comment. It added the, the work item ID. So if I now commit this, this is connected to the work item and I will always know what the change is. The last thing that I want to show you is the Cosmo JSON file. That one has the configuration that I mentioned. Um, it has a couple of technical information and then it has the artifacts. And that would be where I can put in the bug file, the DLL files, the, zip, uh, the, the fonts, the uh, FOPs or whatever I need. And you can also see here, it already has a pre-configured um, setup for the next minor and next major pipelines. So I can always test against the pre-release versions that Microsoft is providing. So this gives you an idea about um, the interaction. We plan to do a lot more, like um, allowing to create pull requests or allowing to create branches, um, do a right click on the work item and say, get started working. And then in the back end, it automatically creates the branch, creates a container, everything is preset up and I can immediately get up and running. Um, so we, we have a lot of ideas how we want to make it even more convenient for a developer. The last thing that I want to show you is our container self-service power app. And that one allows me um, to, for example, create a pull request um, test environment. So I can also do demo environments, but also pull request tests. If I click here, I can see a list of the pull requests that have been assigned to me. So I'm the, the reviewer here. Um, I can just select that one, uh, take a look at what I need to actually test. And then I can, again, just click on that one and uh, create a container from, he from here. Um, in the end result, I will get the same. I get a link to the web client. Um, I get the information that I need and I can get up and running very quickly, test that pull request, and um, don't need to worry about setting up Docker or getting the right sources and so on. 
Again, ease of use. This, of course, is aimed at uh, functional consultants who would do uh, testing. Uh, they, they don't need to bother about the Git structure, uh, Docker, and all that. They just get an environment and can get started with testing. How does pricing for all of this work? Um, now, basically, you get a fully dedicated environment. You need to let us know how many concurrently running containers you want to have. So it's not the, the full number of containers, but only the number of concurrently running ones. It is a monthly subscription. It can be canceled monthly or you can reserve it for a year. Then it's, of course, cheaper. We offer two basic options. It's either 98% or 99.5% availability per month that we guarantee. And then um, the scaling starts currently at four concurrent containers, which is the smallest one. And you would pay uh, 950 euros per month for an, a 98% available environment and one year reserved. Um, to give you an idea of a typical environment, maybe something like 15 containers, uh, that would be a bit more than 2,000 euros per month, again, with the same parameters. And we can go up to 60 concurrently running containers in our price list and are um, open to, to scaling it even beyond that. It requires an ALOps license, and we're currently working um, with them to make sure that we get a good bundled offering here. And you would also need a Power Apps license. Uh, so this should give you an idea about the Docker and DevOps self-service environment. Now to give you an additional idea of how our Cosmo Docs offering works. Um, the idea here is that you just provide, as I said, a Git repository with the markdown files so where you can create your documentation. Then again, we have a SaaS service that um, does all the automation that it needs to do, provides this as a docs website, and that one then is available to integrate to the web clients of uh, Business Central or finance and supply chain management, whatever you need. In the end, you would get a nice looking website, um, for example, like this. And if you click in your Business Central or in your finance and supply chain management on help, then you would get context sensitive help directly provided by us. And again, the basic idea is provide the content. We do the, we do the rest. So you just need to worry about um, uh, providing that content. That's it. Um, thanks a lot for taking the time. Thanks a lot for listening. And if you're interested in our offerings, please let me know and get in touch.